This is Dr. Lisa Marie Bobby, and you're listening to the Love, Happiness, and Success Podcast. I don't care what will happen. I know where I'm going. I know what to do now. That despair. Yodorovich with depression. Yes, we're talking about depression today, but we're talking about it in a way that is going to leave you feeling energized and hopeful about the topic of depression. So stick with me. First, a couple of quick announcements. Um, if you are in Denver and getting married or thinking about it on March the 16th, I hope you come and join me. Um, There will be some people from my team and also some local Denver wedding industry types having a little soiree for you. It's at the JW Marriott in Cherry Creek in the bar. And we're going to hang out and have cocktails and talk about getting married. We're going to be there to give some free tips and advice to premarital couples about how to have the most splendid relationship possible. And you will also get some practical information on the business of getting married from people who know about those kinds of things. So check that out. And while we're on the subject of marriage, um, if you missed our last Lifetime of Love class and would like to be involved, we're having another session that starts on March the 28th, Monday, March the 28th. And it's another six weeks. You'll learn all about how to have a great relationship. It's good for couples who are thinking of getting married and want a more robust premarital counseling experience than what you can often find just at a a churchy kind of thing not that there's anything wrong with that but you know really going diving into communication and keeping love alive and how to handle conflict when it comes up we will be there talking to you about that and also how to plan through problems it's also a great class for more established couples too if you want some help in getting back on track you know maybe you aren't communicating well or you are running into issues around how do we get on the same page about housework or money but don't maybe feel ready for couples counseling yet come to the class it's going to be wonderful so those are my announcements now today today we are going to be talking about depression and as a therapist as any therapist will tell you something about this time of year depression starts to come out of the woodwork it's actually this time of year and also believe it or not september october is when depression kind of happens and i have a couple of theories for this you know i think um we can kind of be okay through the holidays and through christmas and the new year we're full of hope but i tell you what by the time february march sets in you know it's still cold it's still gray winter has been around forever and spring break seems like it's a long way off and you know it can just be kind of just sort of dark and overwhelming and not much to look forward to and so lots of circumstantial kinds of things but I think that there are also some physiological factors related to this time of year that can impact your mood also and so I wanted to put together a piece for you guys in case anybody out there is struggling just kind of feeling meh just to talk about some natural remedies for depression because um, they're out there and I think that depression-y kinds of experiences exist on a spectrum. I would like to say flat out my big disclaimer is that if you struggle with, you know, depression with a capital D, meaning that it is hard to get out of bed, you hate yourself, you hate your life, everything sucks, you have no hope, um, you know, really like viewing everything through that super ultra negative filter and you have a history of it. It's intense. It runs in your family. Please get some medication. And I say this not because I think that medication is the end all be all. It's not. 
But I have walked with so many people who are struggling with depression. And a lot of times people want to come to therapy first. You know, they think, I don't want to do, you know, depression medication might have some stigma around it. You know, like, what does it mean about me if I take medication for depression? And so they want to avoid it. And so they come into therapy. And you know what? I and we, everybody on my team, can do wonderful work with people struggling with depression. Cognitive behavioral therapy works miracles for people. It is the kind of therapy that has the most evidence behind it. It's the gold standard. And so by evidence, I mean that, you know, two groups of people um, get a, quote, treatment. One group gets the experimental treatment, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, and another group gets a control treatment, which might mean just simply talking. It might be just some education, whatever. And so at the before people get those treatments, they give them measures of how are you feeling to rate their depression. And then after the treatment, they give them another measure to see how they're feeling. And so What research shows is that compared to pretty much any other kind of therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy reduces feelings of depression more efficiently than any other kind of therapy. So it's really good stuff. And I will talk more about that if you want to get a better idea of how it can work for you. But here's the rub with that capital D depression, and this happens in my practice sometimes, sometimes people come in for therapy and they are so low and their thinking is so just distorted because of depression, they cannot even engage in therapy unless and until they get on some kind of medication. Medication can just put the floor back under you so that you can do therapy or you can make use of the natural remedy suggestions that I'm going to be giving you today. So if this is something that's been going on for you, you know, you you don't have to see a psychiatrist. You can just go to your general practitioner. They are very well informed about how to deal with depression. They will work with you to find the right kind of antidepressant. Um, It's a process. You might have to try a couple of different kinds of medication before you get on the right one. But um, don't be afraid to go and just have a conversation about it because it can really be a life changer. So that's my big disclaimer. Before we start talking about natural remedies for depression, I just want you to know that getting on the right medication, particularly if you have a family history or a long-standing personal history of depression, can really be a game changer. So don't be a hero and get the right kind of help when you need it. Okay, I'm getting off my soapbox now. Now I will give you what we've all come here for, which are some natural remedies for depression. Because medication can really just be life-changing And there are lots of other things that people can do to support themselves through depression. And I have actually worked with a number of people who, through their journey through depression, um, got to a point where eventually, after a lot of work in therapy and really developing super duper skills to help protect themselves from depression, they were eventually able to get off of their, their medication with good effect. And so I'm just going to explain to you what kinds of things can increase the likelihood that you might feel depressed and also their antidotes to counteract Um, that likelihood and they're simple you know usually lifestyle things that you can can do that can really make you feel an awful lot better so first of all let's talk about low-hanging fruit (laughs) so this is the stuff that is the easiest to go after if you have been feeling depressed I would like for you to take a quick inventory of your health and when I say health I mean you know Have you been feeling sick? Because, you know, there can be a actually a illness response so that when we get sick or are fighting off some kind of infection or trying to heal from a wound, our bodies actually suppress our moods in order so that we stay at home, we don't hang out a whole lot, we're kind of quiet, we're withdrawn, and that is so our bodies have a chance to recover and to heal. So just, you know, circumstantially, are you feeling unwell? Also, circumstantially, is it, is it late winter? Like now, you know, um, 
one of the, the things that I want to tell you about is that when it comes to natural remedies for depression, there is a growing body of evidence that nutrition can actually play a pretty big role in how we feel emotionally. And so, for example, things like vitamin D have been implicated. And so it's it's hard for people to really draw a causal relationship, like because this person is deficient in vitamin D, therefore they have depression. However, in people with depression, you do see reduced concentrations of things like vitamin D in their blood. Um, and, you know, vitamin D in part comes from sunlight. And so when we go for a long period of time without as much sunlight, when we're all bundled up through the winter, our vitamin D levels can start to drop. And that is one reason why um, scientists think that people can be vulnerable to seasonal affective disorder is because of lowered concentrations of vitamin D. Also, things like vitamin B can be implicated. Oftentimes people that struggle with depression are low in vitamin B. Iron deficiency can create feelings of lethargy and droopiness that can be mistaken for depression. And also in this day and age, if you go see a, a decent psychiatrist, they will insist that you do two things immediately. One is start taking fish oil supplements because um, the fatty acids in fish oil actually are the precursors to neurotransmitter substances that can improve your mood, such as serotonin. And so they'll say, take fish oil supplements. And also, and this is fascinating to me, there is growing evidence and it's actually good scientific evidence. I know it, this is going to sound like something that the socks and sandals people at Whole Foods, you know, vitamin aisle are aficionados of, but there's actually science behind it, is that probiotics, um, the, so probiotics, uh, the, the flora in your gut, gut bacteria, the amount and also the kind of bacteria that you have in your gut can have a astounding impact on the way that you feel. I have seen some fascinating studies on this topic, actually on, um, it was either mice or rats, can't remember. But anyway, uh, researchers, I took a look at the type of bacteria that anxious, kind of depressed, moody mice had. And it was different than the kind of bacteria that is in the gut of more outgoing, resilient, um, happier, friskier lab rodents. And what was super interesting is that when they transplanted the gut bacteria from the happy, frisky rodents into the sad, droopy rodents, the sad, droopy ones got happier. And vice versa, when they transplanted the gut bacteria from the depressed rats into the happy ones, the happy ones became more somber and subdued. So interesting stuff. And the only reason that I bring this up as low hanging fruit is because it is easy and fairly inexpensive to trot down to your local neighborhood health care, what health food, whatever, and pick up some a multivitamin fish oil supplements and probiotics. Anybody can do that. And so I just want to bring that up is that if you have been feeling kind of droopy and low, that's one really easy place to start is just take some vitamins, take some supplements and see if it impacts your mood. You might need to do this for a little while um, in order to experience the benefits of it, but it's, it's easy, you know. Another thing that you might want to consider is simply drinking more water. And I know that that sounds like duh, but there's research behind it that people who are even slightly dehydrated will report um, lower mood and more anxiety and more difficult time concentrating. They will perceive um, tasks as being more difficult than people who are adequately hydrated. And this is at very low levels of dehydration. So the levels that people might not even realize they're dehydrated will already be causing these kinds of changes in their mood state. So again, I want you to have the fastest, cheapest, easiest remedies against depression possible. And so drink some water, take some vitamins, and that is a great way to start um, if you've been feeling kind of low. Another natural remedy for depression that you must consider is the quality of your sleep. Um, 
I, there are more studies than I can shake a stick at that will uh, show that there is a direct correlation between the quality and quantity of your sleep and your mood. People who don't get enough sleep feel irritable. They feel more anxious and they have more um, mood disturbances. They feel more depressed than people who sleep well. And this is hard because there's a little bit of a chicken and an egg thing going on with depression and sleeping. Sleeping negatively impacts your mood. And when you're struggling with depression or anxiety, one of the symptoms of depression or anxiety is that it impacts your sleep and so this can be a little bit circular and if you're struggling with you know mild to moderate depression one of the things that you'll notice is that you're not sleeping as well and that one of the cures is getting more sleep so what to do you know short term it can be a good idea if you have been struggling and your mood is really struggling again go to your doctor at the same time that you might go have that antidepressant conversation and just tell them what's going on and just very short term sleeping medications can really just help you get back on track because people are very um we have internal cycles they're circadian rhythms and we get very habituated to what those cycles are and so if your sleep has been disrupted for a while your body Body will be all haywire and it will sort of wake itself up in the middle of the night if that's what you've been doing because that's what it thinks like the new plan is um, and you might have noticed this like I wake up every morning at 5 a.m. no matter what I do because that's just what time my body is used to waking up and so just to have some short-term support around sleep can simply help you get your body get back into that eight hours solid block of sleep pattern again other things that you might consider, um, there are uh, things to practice called sleep hygiene, which are skills related to sleeping. So, you know, making sure that you know how to stop stimulating yourself by accident right before you go to bed and also things that you can do to consolidate your sleep if you're interested I did a podcast on this subject a while ago um, I don't remember exactly the date but I will look it up by the time this is published and I will stick a link to that in the show notes um, in the, the post for this episode of the love happiness and success podcast so you'll be able to link to that but that really discusses everything you need to know about how to get a better night sleep and I've also included a couple of um, relaxation meditations that will help you fall asleep if that is something that you struggle with so be sure to check those out another thing that cannot be denied when it comes to natural remedies for depression is exercise going back to research there are very well done studies that show, you know, comparing again two groups of people, one group has the experimental condition and the other one has a control condition. So it's exercise versus no exercise and taking a look at what that does to mood and that people who got moderate amounts of exercise, like 30 minutes a day a few times a week I think it was like five times a week of something that moderately gets your heart rate up so like walking it doesn't have to be a big deal will reduce symptoms of depression to the same degree that antidepressants reduce symptoms of depression so they compared it to groups of people who are on antidepressants and both in the group that exercised and the group that took antidepressant medication and did not exercise, that both of groups, their symptoms were reduced by, I think, like 60 something percent. So it's really significant. And if you are strongly opposed to taking medication, at least exercise because, you know, it A, cannot hurt you unless you have some condition that I don't know about that makes it so that you shouldn't exercise but there's so much evidence supporting you know the health benefits but also the implications on your mood and so I know it's still cold but get a hat on get some gloves on and just walk up and down your street a couple of times and that could be potentially as effective as taking antidepressant medication depending on what's going on with you so take a look at that
And then we can also talk about some um, cognitive and behavioral strategies for managing depression. And so I mentioned in the beginning of the show that cognitive behavioral therapy is like the gold standard for treating depression. And so what cognitive behavioral therapy does is that it takes a look at both the thinking patterns that might be going on that are contributing to feelings of depression and also what you are doing or not doing that might be contributing to feelings of depression. And so all the things that we've talked about so far are actually different behaviors. Drinking more water, taking vitamins, getting more sleep, getting exercise. These are behaviors that you can engage in that will help you feel better on a physiological level. However, there are other behaviors that will also make you feel better. And so taking a look at things that bring people happiness, for example, relationships, the quality of your relationships can have a really powerful impact on your mood. But this is another chicken and egg thing, because if you've been feeling low, part of that experience is withdrawing from relationships. And so one of the ways of combating depression is to really, even though you don't feel like it, be putting yourself in situations where you can be spending time with safe people that feel good to be around doing positive and pleasurable activities. And so it doesn't have to be sitting around talking about how sad you are, but you know, going on a walk together, going on a bike ride, going to a pet store and looking at the puppies and kittens. I mean, something easy, something pleasurable, just getting out of the house and being in the world, but doing it in the company of others can be a very powerful, natural remedy for depression. Um, And if your relationships with other people are strained as a result of depression, that might be one reason that you would consider going to see a therapist and um you know not to toot my own horn here or or that of other therapists but you know um sometimes being able to look at some of the lifestyle factors and mending relationships and really uh, fixing the circumstances that are supporting depression. So things that might have been going on in your life that bring you down, you know, maybe your job feels hard or is dissatisfying. Maybe your relationships aren't in a great place. Maybe you're feeling lonely. Maybe you feel like you're not getting what you want out of life. And those are the things that are contributing to your feelings of depression to be able to come and talk to somebody about that and start to create solutions and resolutions to those problems can be another really helpful thing that is a natural remedy for depression that can really make you feel a lot better. But going back to behaviors, hopefully as a result of those conversations, the behaviors that you're engaging in in your life will change. And as a side note, that I think is always the hallmark of good therapy is that, you know, while you might not be ready to jump in there and make a bunch of changes right at the outset, good therapy will always lead to changes. We don't just talk about stuff forever. You have to go and do things differently in order to reap the benefits. And so good therapy is always behavioral and action oriented at some point so other behaviors that you might want to consider if being with other people feels hard is just to take a quick inventory of what kinds of things make you feel good what do you enjoy typically when you're feeling depressed you are not going to enjoy them as much you will feel kind of flat and kind of meh when you do them, and also to be surrounding yourself with these kinds of things anyway, and not just giving up and sitting in a corner and watching TV, but, you know, taking yourself to the bookstore, browsing around, going on a drive, listening to music, thinking about what kinds of things are positive and pleasurable, and really consciously building those into your life, because those will really be like a almost like wearing a safety vest, you know, that you won't go all the way under as long as you have positive and pleasurable things in your life on your own or with other people. And then lastly, I think really the most important natural thing that you can do to help yourself with feelings of depression is to work on the cognitions associated with depression. So I'm going to use a word that some people don't like, but it is what it is. It's distortions and you might not like this, but I have to tell you, 
when I sit in my therapy office with somebody who is depressed, I can hear it in the way that they talk and in the quality of their thoughts. People who are depressed have are struggling with cognitive distortions and these are very specific kinds of thoughts that tend to tank your mood. An example of a cognitive distortion would be there are many different kinds, but one would be personalizing. So, you know, something bad happened, something that I didn't like happened, and it's my fault. Or my boyfriend was in a grumpy mood when he came home from work, and it's because he was mad at me. Or I wasn't selected to go on this trip that everybody else in my office was going, and it's because they don't like me. You know, like the possibility that there could be other uh, reasons for your boyfriend being in a grumpy mood or the fact that you weren't selected to go to this one thing for your job. Like, so these distortions that come along with depression, they are very negative and they tell you, yeah, it was all your fault and nobody likes you and your boyfriend is mad at you. He's probably going to break up with you. It's like there's just this running commentary in your head telling you how crappy you are, how hopeless it is, that it's all your fault. Um, Cognitive distortions can also take the form of rules, like things have to be a certain way, or I know how things are going to turn out, and it's going to be bad, so there's no point in me even doing it. Like Cognitive distortions can take people in all kinds of different directions, and they can be really bad news because the quality of our thoughts oftentimes determines our mood. Now with depression, again, it can be a little bit of that circular thing because if we get caught into negative thought cycles, it can absolutely bring our mood down. And also in the case of of depression, because it it can be so biological, um, the way that we feel biologically can then influence our moods because we feel bad what we humans do is we try to validate ourselves so if we're feeling bad we look for reasons why we should feel bad and of course we can always find those similarly if we're feeling anxious we look around to figure out what we should be afraid of and we find it so our mood can determine our thoughts and that's just something to be aware of um Where was I going with this? Oh, cognitive distortions. (laughs) Because these cognitive distortions can be so powerful, it's really important to help yourself, um, A, identify that you're having them, and also learn how to talk back to this yucky voice in your head. And that is really the core of cognitive behavioral therapy. And this can be hard to do on your own. This could be another thing that you would potentially want to go see a therapist for. Um, If you want a few pointers, you can go onto my website. I put together a happiness class for you that teaches you the basics of cognitive distortions and how to start talking back to them by shifting your thoughts into not necessarily more positive thoughts, but more healthy, helpful ways of looking at the same situations. And when you acquire those skills, you will be able to change your mood and start to feel better as opposed to feel worse if you just let cognitive distortions have their way with you. So so there are some natural remedies for depression for you. Um, just to recap, nutrition is very important. So you know, make sure that you're getting vitamins, minerals, sit in the sun for a little while, get some vitamin D, drink more water, get some more sleep, Um, I've included a resource for you to learn how to sleep better. There's a podcast that I did previously. There's a link to. We also talked about the importance of exercise and also engaging in positive and pleasurable behaviors, even if you don't always feel like it. It's important to do. And lastly, we started talking about cognitions and how the dialogue that you're having in your head can really impact your mood. And I gave you some resources for that. So check out Happiness Class. Check out that other podcast. Um, And good luck. And I hope that this uh, information has been helpful for you and that you start feeling better again soon. And let me just tell you, 
if you try these things and it feels like they don't work and that it's just like hopeless and so heavy feeling and nothing that you do works, do consider medication, even for the short term. You know, a few months, it can help you start to engage in these um, ideas that I've shared with you. If you can use medication as a temporary platform to learn how to change your thoughts, get in a better habit with your behaviors, start taking better care of yourself, improve your sleep, you know, it will have done its job. And when you have all of these really good caretaking behaviors and ways of thinking and ways of being in place, then some people can get off of that medication slowly again and know how to take care of themselves so that they are less vulnerable to depression in the future. So sometimes people can't, especially if there's that biological component, but ideally that is how antidepressants can be used. So I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope you try some of these ideas, especially the easy ones, and I hope that they they help you and help you feel happier because that's what this is all about, right? Okay, you take care and I will talk to you again next time. Looking back